Tonight, Microsoft makes it official. Satya Nadella is the new CEO, and change, as they say, is a-coming. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 17 for Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Father Robert Balasser. Our top story is Microsoft's announcement of a new CEO and that shakeup that this announcement may bring. Joining us are Lou Maresca, Senior Software Development Engineer at Microsoft, and Ed Baig, the Personal Technology Columnist for USA Today. Ed, we'll start with you. Nokia Chief Stephen Elop has been put in charge of the Surface, Windows Phone, and Xbox groups. When Elop worked at Microsoft before, he was the head of the business division. That means that the CEO, the chairman, and even the guy in charge of the consumer business division are enterprise people with limited experience in the consumer realm. Could that mean that Microsoft is de-emphasizing their consumer business going forward? That's the big question. I mean, people have been asking that ever since really word came out that Nadella seemed to be the choice. You know, this was the worst kept secret in uh, in, in tech world. Um, I think it's something that, that we're going to really have to watch. Uh, you know, anybody who's got an Xbox is thinking about it. Uh, but in all seriousness, this guy is is an enterprise guy. I mean, he gets good grades for what he did with cloud computing. Consumer, I don't know. I really want to see what happens here. Of course, Bill Gates is back uh, in a more prominent role, and I think Bill still has some affection for the consumer. At least I'd like to believe he does. Ed, speaking of Bill Gates, what do you make of his new advisory role? Is that a figurehead position, or do you think he'll really be able to make a difference? Well, I think he's still highly regarded inside Microsoft. He's still synonymous with the company. You know, he's been gone as the full-time CEO since 2000. Of course, he left his job there, if you will, full-time job in, in 2008. And yet people still associate him with that company. And let's not forget, he's still an owner of the company. He's got, what, 4% of the stock. So uh, I don't think he's a figurehead. I think he's a voice that people will listen to both inside the company. The question I have is, how much of a public face will he have now nowadays, uh, now that Nadella is the number one guy there? Right. Ed, Nadella has emphasized services and devices, but isn't Microsoft primarily a software company? They traditionally have been, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen how they have not done well moving into uh, mobile, which is, you know, one of the big questions. You know, Windows, of course, Windows and Office with the bread and butter for so many years, but they've been very slow or laggards trying to move into some of these other areas. Uh, again, cloud computing is, is certainly where they have to make a big move, and that's that's an area where Nadella has certainly made an impact, and they're going to have to move that forward, certainly on the enterprise side. But yeah, you think of them as a software company, but what does that even mean anymore? It's all shifting. All right. Ed Bag, thanks for joining us. Where can they find you if uh, our audience wants to find your work? Well, follow me at Ed Baig on Twitter, E-D-B-A-I-G, and, of course, usatoday.com slash tech. Thank you, Ed. Now, before we talk to Lou Maresca, let's take a break. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With Lynda's easiest-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, with industry experts. With a lynda.com subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. Want to improve your photography, master new software, boost your web design skills, or learn programming? Well, at lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, tablet, or mobile device, and the instructors are accomplished professionals, experts in their field, who are passionate about teaching. And each course is structured so that you can learn from start to finish or just jump on to find a quick answer. Now, it's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now 
with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses free for seven days. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. Let's get on to Lulu. You've been with Microsoft for a decade and you've seen its ups and downs. Tell us, with this announcement, what is the mood on the Microsoft campus? Oh my gosh, it's, it's just the, the tone is it's totally of excitement. Um, you know, the media coverage was kind of like, you know, leaks left and right. It was kind of you know, flaky a little bit at best. But, you know, the board was really doing its due diligence and trying to find the right candidate. And, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of criticism that Satya is an internal candidate. Um, but, you know, personally, I think that that's really what it's going to take to um, to handle such like a complex moving machine as Microsoft really is. And so, you know, Satya is one of three uh, CEOs in the history of Microsoft. So, I mean, that alone is striking an emotional response here. It's very positive. Um, and again, you know, he's he's a strong believer in, you know, having an emotional connection with work. And, you know, that emotional connection is kind of like thriving based off of, uh, you know, our impact on customers. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel the same way. And it's one of those things that's just very positive. Now, Lou, just last week, Microsoft announced their initiative to build transparency centers and allow foreign governments to examine their code for security backdoors. Now, these transparency centers seem to be a good first step towards earning back some of the trust that has been lost with foreign governments over the NSA spying revelations. What other moves do you think would be important for him, not only to make to earn back trust with governments, but also with users? I think I think it makes more sense for for Microsoft, even all companies, to be a little bit more transparent with its consumers of what they're doing with their information. I mean, that will help not only uh, gain back the trust, but ensure that really, when anytime there's a Microsoft property that you go to and you're giving information to them, you know, consumer just really has to just shrug it off and know that it's not really going to go anywhere but there. And I think that that's a really super important thing is just be making it more transparent to the consumer as well as the businesses. Uh, and that will help, you know, with any type of trust situations. Right. Lou, in his first letter to his employees, Sacha wrote, we need to prioritize innovation. Let me ask, how do you interpret that innovation, uh, that invitation to innovation? Sure. So, you know, one of the things that he said in, in this morning's speech was he really wanted to be able to remove obstacles that each organization in Microsoft was really preventing them from actually innovating. And I think that that's really meant what he meant by that was there, you know, there is a lot of, tiered layered approach at Microsoft where a lot of decision making gets some kind of sometimes filtering out some of the innovation and I think that he's really all about uh, you know removing that filter and letting just innovation flow through and then making it to the consumer more often than not and so you might see even more things at a much minor spread coming out from Microsoft in the future and then you know that's just a, obviously a personal view but I think that that's really where it's going to come to. Now, Lou, I'm going to ask for one more bit of insider information, and that was that is that it's just been announced that Scott Guthrie, who had been the VP of the developer division, will be taking over Sacha's old position. What do you think about that? Is, is that a good fit? Is this a temporary thing, or do you think maybe he m might be the man for that job? Oh, no, he's definitely, I mean, the guy alone, you know, he's, he's obviously in the VP developer division right now until his transition. But, you know, right now he's running things like Windows Azure. Um, he's, running, he's running things, you know, like the .NET platform, Visual Studio. I mean, he really understands the need that businesses have from, you know, from a cloud perspective, from a server perspective, from a security perspective. And I think that, you know, if you ever hear him speak, he's very... He's very, very particular about making sure customers understand where their data is going and how, how the servers are handling it, how performant it's going to be, and how Azure handles it. And I think that he's just a, a no-brainer for that position. Thank you, Lou Maresca. Lou, you are a regular on the Twit TV network, but where can our audience find you if they want to find out more? Sure. Um, Twitter.com, uh, Lou, uh, Lou MM, I'm on Twitter. Uh, it was about me, dot, uh, dot, about, dot me and Lou MM on there as well. And find me on LinkedIn as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. And uh, if you like the show, please, before you do anything else, subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific. I'm Father Robert Balasare. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.